wouldn't want to live in the Sunshine State. Florida gained over 400,000 new residents in 2022. So many people, of course, are lured here because of the warm weather and the sandy beaches. But for some, it's a place of refuge. I'm the kind of person that I always write my intentions and I believe in that and write the things that you want to see in the future. And there's a lot of things that now are a reality. Crisia Lopez has found happiness in Orlando. Now I have friends that are family. I have like a, a full package. And now I'm doing what I love. It's a life she dreamed of, but not exactly where she expected. I did not want to leave the island, but now, now literally I can breathe. Lopez is one of an estimated 200,000 people from Puerto Rico who uprooted their lives after Hurricane Maria barreled through the island back in 2017. Years later, for Lopez, the memory of the storm still haunts her. It feels like 24 hours, like ongoing. The wind, but the noise. It's like a The noise. Not wanting to be alone, Lopez went to a friend's house to wait out the hurricane. Thanks to the Lord that we made that decision to stay together that night. They spent the night bailing buckets of water out of the home, but the light of day illuminated the full scale of so much destruction around them. Todo estaba en el piso. Todos los árboles, todos los billboards, todo estaba en el piso. Era como si hubiesen caído no sé cuántas bombas en la isla y hubiese explotado todo. Así era como se veía. Lopez says the storm was like nothing she had ever experienced over her lifetime living in Puerto Rico, and she's not alone. Although no single extreme weather event can be attributed to climate change. Scientists say storms like Hurricane Maria are part of a pattern of increasingly severe storms triggered by rising global temperatures. The models are strongly suggesting that hurricanes are going to be more intense in a warmer climate. Tom Knudsen is a senior scientist at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, also known as NOAA. The government agency is most commonly known for its weather forecasting through the National Weather Service, but it also studies future long-term climate effects. The atmosphere in a warmer climate is holding more water vapor, typically, so these hurricanes that act like sort of a engines to uh, converge water vapor in near the center of the storm and it falls out in these fierce hurricane thunderstorms. Knudsen's work focuses on building and studying climate models. We do that to try to understand how the climate system ticks. These models use historical weather data to help scientists anticipate future climate trends through different lenses. The models themselves are a large set of equations that describe different parts of the climate system. These models, he says, do not mean experts have a crystal ball, but observational data has proved they are highly effective at predicting certain climate impacts. We have a very high confidence that we're going to continue warming, uh, being driven by this increase in greenhouse gases. Rising temperatures have different effects on communities across the country. From one coast. Another thing we're seeing very clearly is the increase of extreme precipitation. It seems to be strongest in the Northeast and the sort of North Central part of the US. To the other. To the Southwest, we're seeing uh, more evidence in the past data for increases in drought uh, risk. Globally, the impacts could be even more severe. In some places, models suggest heat stress could reach a boiling point. Significant parts of these uh, 
areas of the world which are presently warm and humid could approach these basically uninhabitable uh, levels in terms of heat stress. He says those heat extremes are most likely to impact regions of India and the Middle East, while areas like the Mediterranean and Southwest Africa show indications of increasing drought risk. And sea level rise is expected to encroach on coastal communities across the globe. I think that some type of effect is occurring practically everywhere. Many places are already beginning to experience these changes. It unleashed all that water, the floods that swept entire neighborhoods like this into the sea. Tomorrow we are going to see severe fire dangers. This is the first time I'm going to see it, so it's, it's pretty bad. Within 10 minutes, the water just flow in. We could do nothing. With the most dramatic effects in communities without the resources to adapt to and recover from changing weather patterns. For me, the hurricane, it was the, like, the, el punto, que, okay, ya no puedo más. The tipping point. Lopez says for her, the decision to leave Puerto Rico was more than just Hurricane Maria. Even without severe weather, she says, power outages are a regular occurrence. And another troublesome situation, she says, is the island's economy that continues to flounder. Despite a college degree and a coveted job at a famous radio station in San Juan, Lopez says it was a challenge to make ends meet. We didn't have the opportunity to see a prosperity of the island, abundance, no. When the hurricane came, it was like, okay, we're living with this economic crisis every day. And the hurricane literally broke the camel's back. Yeah. Those first weeks, you didn't know if your family were alive or no. For Crisia Lopez, it's painful to remember her experience after Hurricane Maria barreled through Puerto Rico. There was no power, no water. When she finally got phone service, the first call that came through was one that would change her life. My best friend, she called me and she was like, Crisia, now is the time. What are you waiting for? Que más tienes que pensar? Move. Calling from Orlando, a familiar voice offered her a lifeline. She offered me like, you can come here and stay here with me. She took it as a sign. I remember I received a $500 voucher. And with that, I bought my, my airplane ticket to, to get here. Lopez's story mirrors that of so many people who move after a climate event. We know that people are most likely going to move to places where they already have friends and family or connections to a given area. Matt Hauer has spent his entire career studying human migration patterns and is looking ahead to what may be the country's next big demographic shift. We're already seeing people murmuring about associated impacts around hurricanes, around flooding, and people starting to think about, is this where I actually want to, to live? Much of his work has been focused on just one facet of climate change, rising sea levels. Not even thinking about hurricanes, not even thinking about extreme heat. Mm -hmm. We're looking at somewhere between six and about 13 million people in the United States that will have to move just from sea level rise in the United States. That number only accounts for those directly affected by rising sea levels, but there are larger ripple effects. As people leave coastal communities, they take the demand for services with them. You'll need fewer dentists, construction workers, bartenders, and so on, in the place where they originated from. So the actual number of people that will end up moving 
is probably going to be much greater than six to 13 million. And a migration event of this scale, he says, demands preparation now. Essentially what keeps me up at night is we're not going to do anything. Where we, we wake up one day and we go, wow, we should have done something 20 years ago. A recent study from the Urban Institute aims to avoid that. The results offer recommendations to likely receiver cities based on lessons learned from past climate disasters. That was the, the mass movement of people from Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. Fernando Rivera is the founding director and currently runs the Puerto Rico Research Hub at the University of Central Florida. He partnered with Urban Institute for the Orlando arm of the study, examining the city's response to the influx of so many people. Do you think Orlando met those needs when people were arriving? Absolutely. It was the assistant uh, center at the airport. You could get your license, you could get a job, you could get health insurance, all those type of things. But he worries about Orlando and surrounding cities' ability to handle similar events in the future. The issue of, 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 of housing uh, nowadays, you know, the issue with insurance, all those type of things, that, that's a problem that continues to worsen in the area. Much of the 2017 success stories he attributes to an outpouring of support from Orlando's huge Puerto Rican community and melting pot of other Hispanics in the area. Everybody was trying to do something from the faith level to the faith sector, to the nonprofit groups, to the governmental groups, to the educational groups. But Rivera says relying on private organizations is not a permanent solution. A lot of the groups that were providing aid at that time are no longer in existence. The government cannot rely on the good heart of other organizations. And perhaps the biggest challenge for those who move to Central Florida because of extreme climate changes may actually be the climate itself. I was shocked. We had these rainfall rates that were bringing colors onto our graphics that we never see. Spectrum News severe weather expert Maureen McCann has spent a decade covering Florida storms, but says Hurricane Ian was unlike anything she had ever experienced. Even going into the storm, the projection of what the rainfall totals may look like, eight to 16 inches. I mean, that's more like a snowfall map that you see in the Northeast. McCann says events like this could become more common as the climate continues to warm. While the frequency of hurricanes or the number of storms may not go up, the intensity will because of you know, the amount of water vapor that's present in a warmer environment. While many of the effects of climate change may be inevitable, Rivera believes the disasters they cause do not have to be. Hazards we're gonna have, right? Hurricanes, snowstorms, rain, all those type of things. The disaster happens when we as a society decide not to prepare. For Orlando, he says, that means updating infrastructure to better withstand the next storm, because there will be another one, and rethinking how we build back in vulnerable areas. This is not gonna go away. I wish we could. I wish it got colder, we don't have any more uh, natural hazards happening, but that's not the reality. And I think we have the point that we're seeing it every day. The threat of more intense storms here in her new home is a scary thought for Lopez, who is still dealing with the trauma of Hurricane Maria. What do you think whenever we have storms here in Central Florida and the power might go out for a few days mm -hmm. or a few? Here in my home, the power went out. I remember the refrigerator went down. Y cuando eso pasó, oof, it take me to the, to the hurricane because of the smell. And I, begin, I remember that I began to cry. Still, she says Orlando is her home now and she plans to stay here. 
I came here because of a trauma, but still, a lot of the things that I wanted, now I have them. So it's not that you're here and everything is magic. You make the magic. <laughs> you need to make the magic. At the end of the day, it worked it because now I live with dignity. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Let Spectrum News be your resource for balanced, in depth political coverage. And click the subscribe button here. You can also download our app and watch us on TV to learn more about the candidates, where they stand on the issues, and more. We'll see you then.